What's up, Ninja Nerds? In this video, we're gonna talk about the ear. So to start it all off, we gotta look at the external ear. So this right here is a part of the external ear. It's actually called the auricle or the pina, and it's actually made up of an elastic cartilage, uh, which allows for the ear to be able to be flexible and to be, you know, be able to stretch and recoil, right? So that's the, that's the auricle or the pina. It's a component of the external ear. But then if you actually look, I'm stabbing this pointer out to the guy's like uh, ear, there's a little tube here, a little tube that I can follow all the way down. It's called the external acoustic or auditory meatus. So it's a little canal that allows for sound waves to pass through. Um, another thing, inside of this external acoustic or auditory meatus is little things called ceruminous glands, which are modified apocrine glands. And what they do is they produce chemicals called ceramin. And that substance helps to be able to deter insects or things from getting into the ear, right? If we follow the external auditory meatus, we're going to hit a little barrier. Boom, that little guy right there, that connective tissue membrane structure. That's actually called the tympanic membrane. So the tympanic membrane is this little separating structure between what two cavities? The external ear and this cavity over here, which is called the middle ear cavity. Okay, so we covered the external ear. Now let's go ahead and talk about the middle ear now. So the middle ear, again, is actually, I said, we can actually call it, uh, remember the tympanic membrane separates the external ear from the middle ear. Well, here in the middle ear, you'll notice this little tube. You see this tube that drains all the way down here? That little tube there that drains the middle ear into what's called the nasal cavity, it actually drains it into what's called the nasal pharynx, um, it's actually helpful for being able to equalize the pressure between the atmosphere and the middle ear. So you'll notice that whenever you're flying at high altitudes, you want to be able to, your ears feel like they're plugged. So even sometimes you open your mouth to be able to equalize that pressure, right? To try to pop your ears. So that's what this little tube here is doing. It's helping to equalize the pressure uh, with the atmosphere in your middle ear cavity. So it's really important. If you look here, you can see number 30. Number 30 right there is a skeletal muscle structure. It's actually called the tensor tympani. So he's also a part of the middle ear. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull this little tympanic membrane out so that you guys can see it. And I wanna talk about a couple little bones that are present in here called ossicles. All right guys, so now if you look here, we got the tympanic membrane. So this is actually gonna be the part of the tympanic membrane that's actually next to or on the side of the external ear. So this is the part of the tympanic membrane that's on the side of the external ear. Now if I go ahead and flip it to the other side, which is actually gonna be pointing towards the middle ear part. Okay, so this is now the view from the middle ear. You're going to see again, this is the connective tissue part here, which is actually going to be a part of the tympanic membrane. But then I told you there's some really important bones that are actually uh, on this called ossicles. These are the tiniest little bones in your body. If you notice, they're going to go in order of uh, whenever the tympanic membrane uh, compresses and decompresses, these little ossicles vibrate and they vibrate in order. If you notice, 25 is actually called malleus. Okay, so 25 is malleus, 26 is incus. And then there's a little bone that actually comes off of this part, like it's actually coming out at you. There's a little bone that's actually attached to this little piece here at Incus, and that's called stapes. And the stapes is the last part of the ossicle that actually taps on a little inner ear structure, which is called the oval window, okay? So now that we looked at the tympanic membrane, we're gonna put it back in there, take another look inside of the tympanic uh, cavity, or the middle ear cavity, and then we're gonna work to the inner ear. All right, guys, so a little bit of orientation here. You can actually see the tympanic membrane right here. And again, I told you it's what separates the external ear from the middle ear. If you look, there's that little muscle that actually connects to that really important bone. And this little muscle is called the stapedius. And the stapedius is actually connecting to this little bone right here. That little bone right there is actually called stapes. It literally looks like a stirrup, like when you have the saddle, like you put your foot into the little stirrup there. That's what the stapes looks like. And whenever he vibrates, he taps on what's called the oval window um, uh, and actually helps to create fluid fill vibrations. So again, stapedius muscle right there, stapes right here, and then again, this is the whole middle ear cavity here. And then again, you get like your eustachian tube or your auditory or fringe or tympanic tube. And again, tympanic membrane separates the external ear from the middle ear. All right, so now what we're gonna do guys, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the inner ear. All right guys, so in order for us to be able to get a better look at the inner ear, I need to take this little part of the bone off. All right guys, so now taking a look at the inner ear, before we actually do that, I wanted to show you guys, you could actually see a part of the middle ear here. So again, 25 is malleus, 26 over there is incus, and again, those were the little ossicles that were connected to the tympanic membrane, right? All right, so now looking here at the inner ear, you see this whole bunch of structures here. We're gonna go through them piece by piece, in kind of like an order. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is these semicircular canals. 
So if you look here, you'll kind of see all of them. So like there's a half a circle, there's a half a circle over here, and there's a half a circle over there. These are your semicircular canals. And they're actually an outer bony labyrinth, which is made of perilymph, okay? So again, this is actually, you know, specifically, you could say this is the anterior semicircular canal. This one over here is the lateral semicircular canal. And then this one actually back here is the posterior semicircular canal. And again, they're the outer bony labyrinth, which is made of perilymph. Now, inside of the semicircular canals, you have these little things called ducts. So you see these little blue structures here inside of the semicircular canals? These are actually called your semicircular ducts. And the semicircular ducts are actually going to be an inner membranous labyrinth filled with what's called endolymph. Okay, so again, semicircular canals is the outer white part, but this inner blue part here is the inner, it's called the semicircular ducts made of endolymph. At the end part here, you can actually see a dilated region of the semicircular duct right here. This right there is actually called the ampulla of the semicircular ducts. The ampulla of the semicircular ducts has a specialized structure found in it called the cristae ampullaris. And the cristae ampullaris is actually helpful for being able to detect what's called dynamic equilibrium. Okay? So again, that's that in a nutshell, semicircular canals, anterior, lateral, posterior, and they're the outer bony labyrinth which is made of perilymph. Inside of them is an inner membranous labyrinth made of endolymph, and that's called the semicircular ducts. And right there, this dilated region right there is called the ampulla of the semicircular ducts, and it consists of the cristae ampullaris, which detects dynamic equilibrium. All right, guys, so now we're going to take a look at another component of the inner ear, and it's actually called the vestibule. You can actually see it. It's right there, number 31. And it's that little thick white part there. It actually kind of looks like the, it's the base structure from which the semicircular canals are coming off of. Okay, so again, 31 is the vestibule. And the vestibule is actually going to be the outer bony labyrinth, which is made of perilymph. Now, inside of the vestibule, you have these two little, like, uh, fluid-filled parts right here. So you see this right there? 43 is called the utricle. And then 42 down here below it is called the saccule. Now, again, one more time, the vestibule is the outer bony labyrinth, which is filled with perilymph. Inside of it is these inner membranous labyrinths, which are filled with endolymph. And again, what are those structures called? First one is 43, which is the utricle. Below it, 42 is the saccule. That makes up the actual vestibule and the inner structures. Right, another thing, guys, and we'll talk about it in the actual vestibular physiology, but inside of this actual uh, utricle and saccule, you have a specialized detector called the maculae. Uh, interesting uh, point here. Inside of the, the maculae, you have these little things called otolith crystals, and they're actually made like calcium carbonate crystals. And sometimes in people who have what's called benign proximal positional vertigo, those calcium carbonate crystals can actually get dislodged and get stuck inside of these little semicircular ducts here and can throw off the person's equilibrium and balance and produce what's called vertigo. So sometimes they have to do what's called a candlelit repositioning procedure or you know, give them antivert as a medication to treat it. Okay, so again, just a little clinical correlation there. So again, utricle, saccule, have the structure inside of them called the maculae, and he's helping to be able to maintain what's called static equilibrium. All right, guys, so all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of positioning the inner ear so it's easier for you guys to be able to see all the anatomical structures. All right, so the first thing that I want to talk about is these two little windows here. So you see 32? That's actually called the oval window. Now, the oval window is important because that's what the stapes taps on. Remember I told you guys that? That the, the stapes is tapping on the oval window and creating these fluid-filled vibrations. Okay, so he's really important for whenever the stapes taps on him, he creates these fluid-filled vibrations within the cochlea. And we'll talk about that. And then over here, this little guy over there is actually called the round window. The round window is important because whenever these fluid-filled vibrations are occurring, you want to prevent the actual vibrations from being scattered out into the inner ear and being lost. So the round window helps to be able to prevent the scattering of those actual uh, vibrational impulses, okay? So he's an important structure for that. Next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the cochlea and the three chambers. All right, guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at all three chambers of the cochlea. So the upper chamber is this top chamber right there. It's actually called the scale of vestibuli. It's an outer bony labyrinth which is filled with perilymph again. Okay? Then there's a middle chamber I'll show you guys here in a second. It's actually called the cochlear duct or the scale of media. It's the inner membranous labyrinth which is filled with endolymph. Okay? And then there's a lower chamber called the scala 
tympani. And the scale of tympani is actually going to be another, it's the lower chamber, and it's the outer bony labyrinth, which is filled with perilymph. So real quick recap before I show you guys. Again, scale of vestibuli is outer bony labyrinth with perilymph. The, the scale of media or the cochlear duct is an inner membranous labyrinth filled with endolymph. And then the lower chamber is the scale of tympani, which is the outer bony labyrinth filled with perilymph. So now let's take a look at these structures. So the first one I'm going to take a look at is the scale of vestibuli. Let me take this little piece here off so that you guys can see inside of it what it looks like. Okay. So again, this is going to be the little inner chamber here called the scala vestibuli. Okay. And it's made of perilymph. Now, let's get that out of the way and I'm going to show you guys another structure here. So if you look here, you can see number 50. 50 kind of is like, it looks like this all this like, uh, white and red structure here kind of going all the way around so I'm going to follow it up like a little loop here loop de loop de loop de loop right so 50 all that right there is called the cochlear duct and again that's going to be the inner membranous labyrinth which is filled with endolymph inside of this structure on what's called the bacillar membrane you have a special detector called the spiral organ of corti and it helps to be able to pick up sound waves. And those sound waves will then be sent okay, to our primary uh, auditory cortex, which help us to be able to perceive those sounds in different ways. Okay, So again, cochlear duct, the special detector is the spiral organ of corti, picks up sound waves. Now the lower chamber is a little tough to see. It's actually 40 here. It's actually, that's what we're trying to denote it as. But it's underneath the cochlear duct. So if you could imagine this chamber, a lower chamber, underneath this actual cochlear duct. That would be the scala tympani. Okay, and again, that's actually going to be an outer bony labyrinth which is filled with perilymph. Okay, now that we've covered all the chambers, we're going to put the inner ear back together and in place so that we can take a look at the vestibulocochlear nerve. All right, so if you guys look here, we're going to have the vestibulocochlear nerve, which is, again, cranial nerve 8. So if you look here, it's this whole, whole chunk here, this whole chunk here. If you can look, 45 is trying to represent it as from this chunk here all the way down to this whole chunk here. Okay, so that's the vestibular cochlear nerve or cranial nerve 8. And it actually runs through this little, little divot here that you see called the internal acoustic or auditory meatus. So again, there's two branches of the vestibular cochlear nerve. This whole branch right here, which is actually coming from the cochlea. So it's called the cochlear branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. Then there's another branch, which is actually one's coming from over here and then this whole part over here. That whole branch there coming this way is the vestibular branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. Okay, That's taking up information from the semicircular uh, ducts, specifically the ampulla, and it's also taking this information from the macula inside the utricle and the saccule. And you can actually see they actually run through a ganglion, this little pink little gummy structure right there. It's actually called the vestibular ganglion. Uh, sometimes they even call it scarpa's ganglion. So again, vestibular ganglion there. And then there's another pink gummy structure right there called the vestibular ganglion. Or again, you can call it scarpa's ganglion. Okay, guys. So now to wrap it all off, we're going to do a quick recap of following sound waves all the way through the ear and then how that actually gets carried on the vestibular cochlear nerve. All right, engineers. So let's go ahead and finish this all up. So if we follow sound waves all the way from the actual atmosphere, so let's say that there's sound waves, so someone's like me talking to you guys. What happens is those sound waves are traveling in through the external acoustic or auditory meatus. Then as those sound waves travel through the external acoustic or auditory meatus, they actually hit the tympanic membrane. And when they hit the tympanic membrane, the tympanic membrane actually undergoes what's called compression first, and then it actually decompresses. After it compresses and decompresses, it has a little vibration of those little bony ossicles. Remember those? So the first one that it'll vibrate is actually called malleus. The second one that will vibrate as a result is incus. And then incus will actually cause the vibration of stapes. And then stapes will tap on that oval window, if you guys remember. Now, whenever the oval window is tapped on, it creates fluid-filled vibrations. And what happens is the vibrations actually move through what's actually called the scale of vestibuli, that upper chamber, and then it moves downwards and bends the bacillar membrane. And the bacillar membrane is a membrane that separates the cochlear duct, if you guys remember that, from what's called the scala tympani, which was the chamber underneath. When it bends the bacillar membrane or changes, it causes uh, fluid-filled vibrations within that cochlear duct, 
what happens is it stimulates little hair cells that stimulate what's called the spiral organ of corti. When it stimulates the spiral organ of corti, those hair cells, when they're stimulated, it sends action potentials down that cochlear branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve. And then what happens is that'll take that information to eventually the primary auditory cortex in the temporal lobe. And that helps us to be able to allow for understanding or perceiving those different types of sound waves, right? All right, engineers. So in this video, we covered a lot about the ear. I really hope it made sense. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time.